Now this is Tech Math 2. And uh, we'll remind everybody that their course critiques are due and no one's done them yet. Um, for those that are with me next uh, hour, that'll be a good time. For Nate, you're going to have to figure out how to do it on your own. Just email me your logon and password and I'll fill them in for you. Um, huh? No, we, we'll, do, we'll do it in, in industrial um, electronics so that we can do it with a computer lab. You need a computer to do it. Okay, so we're in uh, section 10-2. The issue is if I, if I take the cosine of something, if I take the arc cosine of something on my calculator, what am I going to get? And if I take the arc sine of something, what is it that I'm going to get? And if I take the arc tangent of something, what is my calculator going to give me? Well, if I look at the cosine function, it does this. And so the cosine function is going to give me an answer um, in the first quadrant and the second quadrant, the arc cosine guy. If I, it's not a field. All right. And then if I look at the sine angle, it does this. So the, the sine angle is going to give me, the arc, co, the arc sine guy is going to give me a fourth quadrant answer or a first quadrant answer. And the tangent guy is going to do the same thing. He's going to give me a fourth or a first quadrant answer. So now the issue is, what the heck's a quadrant? So if I do an xy plane, I have first, second, third, fourth quadrant. So if I take, if I take the, um, let's say I'm over here, and I've got this guy coming that way in a minute. 45 degrees, so that means I'm at 200 and, 225 degrees that way. And I, and I take the, um, and, I, and I know that number. So what is that number? It's the um, square root 2 over 2, right? So this is going to be minus the square root 2 over 2, and this guy is going to be uh, minus the square root 2 over 2. All right, so now, now if I take my calculator and I say, calculator, tell me the arc sine of the square of minus the square root of 2. Divided by 2. And my calculator, because it's in degrees, it's going to tell me the answer is uh, uh, what I do. I did the arc sine. So I took the arc sine of minus the square root of 2 over 2, and I end up with minus 45 degrees. And then I'm going to do the same thing with arc cosine. The arc cosine, and if I could hit the right button, arc cosine of minus the uh, square root of 2 divided by 2, and I'm going to get 135 degrees. So the, the arc cosine of minus the square root of 2 over 2 is that guy, and the arc sine of the square root of 2 over 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2 is this guy. Neither of them are the angle I'm looking for. So my calculator just gave me an answer that's up here, just gave me an answer that's down there, but it didn't give me an answer in the third quadrant where I wanted it to be. Okay, so what I have to do is be smarter than my calculator and know that, that um, the, uh, my calculator can only give me an answer in the, uh, in the quadrants it's giving because the arc cosine function, the arc sine, yeah, the arc sine function looks like this. And um, going between um, one and minus one, but going up and down to infinity. If I if I allowed it to be a non-function, I would have multiple answers. That would not be good. This is the arc sine function. 
So I only allow my calculator to give me answers on a hunk of it that's going between 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees. Pi over 2 minus pi over 2. So um, because I'm only getting that answer, now that I have that answer, I have to be smart enough to get the right answer to put it in the, the correct quadrant. All right, so that being the case, um, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, when I'm in the first quadrant, that is my reference angle. And so I'm over here, and this is 45 degrees. There's nothing wrong with that. I can take the, the sine of it, the cosine of it, the tangent of it. I'm going to get the right answer. I'm going to take the arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, or I'm going to get the right answer. It's not a problem. But if my answer needs to be in the second quadrant, then what I'm going to have to do is take 180 degrees minus that reference angle to find the angle that I have in the second quadrant. And I really did want to make that a theta. If I'm in the third quadrant, then that angle that's a third quadrant answer is 180 degrees plus the reference angle. And if I'm in the, if I'm in the fourth quadrant, then the angle of the fourth quadrant is going to be 360 minus the reference angle. And as soon as we get to uh, radians, then th this will be uh, pi minus the reference angle, and pi plus the reference angle, and 2 pi minus the reference angle. And so that's how I get, that's how I get my answer into the other quadrant when I know my calculator is giving me the wrong answer because it's giving me a, in the case of a, a sine function, it's giving me a first quadrant or a fourth quadrant. And in case of the cosine function, it's giving me a first quadrant or a second quadrant answer. In the case of the, the tangent function, it's giving me a first or a fourth quadrant guy. Okay. So I got I got to be smarter than my calculator to figure out which quadrant I'm in, and then use the reference angle to find the answer that I'm looking for. Okay, so that being the case, did it, is this messy enough for you? Uh, arc cosine. Arc cosine. Now I'm just making it messy. Isn't that better? Arc sine arc sine, arc tangent, arc tangent. So no matter how you try, your calculator is never going to give you a third quadrant answer for arc tangent. Now, there's one exception to this rule. Okay, there's always exceptions, right? So your calculator is, uh, if you have it in um, rectangular form, uh, if, you, if you have it in polar form, um, magnitude, angle, theta, and uh, you put in 4 plus 3i, well, that'd be about uh, 4, minus 4 minus 3i, which would be a, an imaginary number in the third quadrant, it will put it, give you the right angle and the right magnitude. So um, when we get away from the trig, and, and into how my calculator works, the calculator will do it correctly um, in that situation. So that's a, a cool thing to know, too. Okay, anyway, back to question number one. Um, my angle is 120 degrees. I want to know the reference angle. Now, at the reference angle, whatever it is, then the sine of 120 is going to be equal to the sine of theta, and the cosine of 120 is going to be equal minus the sine or the cosine of theta and the tangent of 120 is going to be equal to minus the tangent of the reference angle. So that's what it's saying. It's saying I'm, I'm going to give you back the same answer. I might have a different sign in front of it, but it's going to be the same thing. Anyway, the rule said that the angle is equal to 180 minus the reference angle. 
we're just we just come with a, up with another way for you to make you add and subtract, right? All right. So uh, theta reference is going to be uh, 60 degrees. So the, the sine of 60 degrees is the same as the sine of 120 degrees. Is that, that's what that's saying. The sine 120 is the same as the sine of 60. So I'm going to take my calculator. Sine 120 uh, looks like the square root of 3 over 2. And I take the sine of 60. And it looks like the same exact number, square root of 3 over 2. OK. So uh, either I got lucky or I got it right. I mean, that's a, the only possibility. It's number three. I have 253 degrees. I note that that is a, uh, something in the third quadrant. And in the third quadrant, the angle, the third quadrant answer is uh, 180 plus minus, plus the reference angle. So 253 is equal to 1. How do I know 253 is in the third quadrant? Because it's not bigger than 270, right? It's somewhere between 270 and 180, so that's how come I know it's in the third quadrant. All right, so my reference angle Two fifty three minus one eighty. And I probably put it in my calculator so I don't mess it up too bad. It's too early in the morning. Seventy three degrees. Okay, well we'll do number ten next. Uh, 5, 97, and 13 minutes. Isn't that lovely? Well, it's greater than 360, so the first thing I do is subtract 360 from it. 13, 7, 6 from that is 3, 2, four, so 237. 237 is a third quadrant angle. So the angle is equal to um, 180 plus the reference angle. And we're trying to find the reference angle. So 237 degrees, 13 minutes, 180 plus the reference angle. The reference angle, what we're trying to find, 2370, 13 minus 180 way to go too many zeros there uh, 13 um, 7 8 from there is 5 so 57 degrees and uh, 13 minutes All right, well we'll try that out we're going to take uh, the uh, cosine, uh, the sine doesn't matter. Okay, so we'll take we'll take the tangent. That's what we'll do because the tangent should be the same number. So the tangent of uh, two thirty seven and thirteen. Uh, how do I get to there? Is it in vector? It's in math, right? Math. Degrees, minutes, seconds. All right. 13 seconds, close parentheses, boom. Syntax error. All right, so I got to go. Second function, insert math. Degrees, minutes, seconds, degrees. Enter. Still is a syntax error. All right, I'm get out of there. Get rid of the plus sign. Delete the plus sign. Boom. Okay, so the tangent of uh, 237 degrees 13 minutes is uh, 1.5526879840. 
Okay, I'm going to do it again and take the tangent of 57, 57 degrees, 13 minutes, close parentheses, and I get uh, tangent of uh, 57 point, uh, degrees, 13 minutes, 1.5526879846 for same answer. And that's the whole purpose of having a reference angle, that you get the same answer uh, going either way. Okay, questions about that? Well, it looks like we're heading into a, a extremely simple spot in the question bank. We want to find the uh, the sine. Twelve. Gonna do twelve. All right. So I'm gonna. Have I don't have to do twelve. You, you promise. Twelve. Uh, two, one, three, four degrees. We want to find the reference angle. I don't even know what quadrant I'm in yet. All right, so I'm going to subtract 360. 4, uh, 7, 7, 1. Well, I'm still not. One revolution. I'll subtract 360 again. 4, 1, 4, 1. I'll do it again. 4, 5, 0, 1. I'll do it again. 4, 1, 6. I'll do it again. This will get me there, right? 4, 5, 2. So this is a, a um, third quadrant guy. Now that I know what quadrant I'm in, I know that 254 is equal to 180 plus the reference angle. The reference angle is... 254 minus 180, 74 degrees. So that means the tangent of 74 is the same as the tangent of 2134. And if it's not, then I made an error. Tangent 74. Um, 3.487414444 and the tangent of uh, 2134 it's a totally different number totally totally different all right so that means we made a mistake luckily we have red to correct our mistake so 2134 Minus 360 equals 774. Got that one right. Minus 360. 1414. Got that one right. Minus 360. 1040. Got that so one right. 614 through 694. Minus 6, 694. Yes, I agree. 694. Minus 360. So it should be 334, which is a fourth quadrant answer. And in the fourth quadrant, 334 would it be equal to 360 minus the reference angle? So the reference angle is. 360 minus 334, 26 degrees. All right, so I'm going to take the tangent of 26, and we're going to get um, 0 0.487732589, and then we're going to take the tangent of 2134, and we're going to get the same exact number. Except it's negative because we know that the tangent has to be negative in the fourth quadrant. All right, so check.
that works. Okay, well, that was good. I snuck that one by somebody in the back row, though, so that was good. Number 13. <laughs> <laughs> it must be. Sign. It used to be the front row would protect me from such stupidity, but not anymore. No one sits in the front row ever since they knew it was their job to do it. All right, well, we want four significant digits, so all we're going to do is just put it in our calculator. Sign 124.7. Um, 0 0.8121, four significant digits. Um, number 15, uh, number, yeah, number 16, I think I got 16, not the tangent, 98.3, and we want it to four significant digits. Tangent, 98.3, um, really? Really, yeah, it would be. Minus 6.855. Now, sines, tangent, cosines, do they have any units? No, no units, they're unitless. Um, hmm. Guess we'll go down to 22. No, we won't. We'll do 21. All right, 21. And we want the secant of 192, the four significant digits. Well, the secant is equal to 1 over the cosine of 192. So we just go and put in a calculator 1 divided by cosine 192, close parentheses, and come up with a minus 1.022. Four significant digits. Um, okay, we'll do the number 22. And we want the co secant of 318.3 degrees. And we know that that's 1 over the sine of 318.3 degrees. So we're just going 1 divided by sine 3. 18.3 close parentheses boom minus 1.503 to four significant digits okay now we're going to go to 25 number 25 and we're going to get it wrong okay so sine of theta is 0 0.3684 and we want to be to the nearest tenth of, of the degree okay so we're going to take the arc sine of 0 0.3684 and what do we get arc sine 0 0.3684 21.6 degrees are we right let me get my red marker here. Are we right? <laughs> Simple yes or no. I guess we'll have to vote on it. How many say the instructor, is, as usual, is 100% right? All right? How many say, as usual, the instructor is 100% wrong? How many think that the question is 50% correct? Okay, so the answer is 50% correct. That's, that's the correct response. Um, because the sine, if I look at the sine function, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up. But that 0.36 guy happens twice. He happens in the first quadrant, and he happens in the second quadrant. And the question says, tell me the value of theta between 0 and 360. So there's nothing wrong with 21.6, except it's only half right. We have to find the other theta. That's the whole, that's the whole point of the exercise. So um, in the second quadrant, and th this is the reference angle, because it's the first quadrant. Okay? So in the second quad quadrant, the angle we're looking for is 180 minus the reference angle 
And so that'd be uh, 158.4 degrees. Okay. And we look at, I'm going to take the sine of 158.4. And what do I get? I get 0 0.3681, which is close enough because we're only whatever. Yeah. We only kept three significant digits of one, so we're only going to keep whatever. Here is a tenth of a degree. All right, so in this problem set, we're looking for not just one answer because my calculator gave it to me, but both answers because that's what I'm supposed to be getting. All right. Now that we know the, the, uh, the rules of the game, now it becomes quite easy, right? Cosine 0.1849. So I'm going to take the arc cosine, 0.1849, and I'm going to get um, 0.1849. Who wrote that problem on the board anyway? Cosine theta is equal to. Okay, so theta, as a reference angle, in the first quadrant, is 79.3 but we know that the cosine function starts positive goes negative comes back up and is positive in the first quadrant which is the answer I already have and in the fourth quadrant which is the one I'm looking for so in the fourth quadrant the angle in the fourth quadrant is equal to 360 minus the reference angle, 93.3 degrees. And so I'm going to have 0.7 is 0. And a 7 from 5 is 8. And a 2. Is that what I have? 360 minus 79.3. Yes, that's what I have. All right. So now I, I can write down my final answer. Theta is equal solution set 79.3280.7. And then I'd go back and I, I would check it. So uh, the cosine of 280.7 minus the cosine of uh, 79.3 is 0. Therefore, they're both the same. And uh, so I've checked my work. OK, I'm going to do the same thing for tangent. Number 27. The uh, tangent of theta is uh, 0 0.7250. So I'm going to go arc tangent 0 0.7250. I don't necessarily have to put the zero on my calculator. And I get that theta is um, 35.9. I recognize that as a first quadrant answer as my reference angle. And then I say, well, I have to look at the tangent function. Okay, so it does. Um, goes and does that between minus 90 and 90 and then it repeats itself like that passes through there at um, does this thing goes through there at 180 does that at 270 and over here we're at uh, 360 so I, I have a first quadrant answer and I have a fourth quadrant answer again okay well uh, that being the case um, in the fourth quadrant, the angle is 360 minus the reference angle. So that's going to be uh, 0 0.1. 5 from 9 is 4. Um, 3 from 5 is 2. So that's 324.1 degrees. 360 minus 35.9. Yes, I agree. And then I would 
I would check my work after I make this a little more prettier and say the tangent of 3324.9 minus the tangent of 35.9 and it comes up with it's not zero. Did I enter it wrong? What did I do wrong? It won't tell me. Okay, be that way, calculator. See if I care. All right. 360 minus 35.9. Boom. That's the right answer. Oh. Tangent's not positive in the third quadrant. Oh, gee. As I was saying, when I graph the tangent function, it goes up, it go, passes there, this is at 90 degrees, this is at minus 90 degrees, it comes up, it passes there, it goes over, that's at 180, that's at 270, and then it comes up to there, and I'm there at 360. So I have a third quadrant answer and a first quadrant answer for this guy. Get rid of that guy. So in the third quadrant, the, the angle is 180 plus the reference angle. So 180 plus uh, 359 is uh, 215.9. 180 plus 35.9. Yes, okay, that's better. So tangent of the um, 215.9 guy minus the tangent of the 35.9 guy. It best be zero. It is zero. Um, our answer checks, and theta is going to be a solution set 35.9 degrees to 15.9 degrees. All right, well, it's a good thing we can turn the page. Oh, bummer, just more of the same. Um, hmm, let's see. Guess we'll do 33 first. Number 33. The secant of theta is minus 1.7632. Okay, isn't that good? Well, we still only want a, a tenth of a thing. Okay, so secant is 1 over cosine theta. So that sort of implies that uh, cosine theta is minus 1 over 1.7632. All right. 1 divided by 1.7632 equals minus 0 0.56715. All right, now, my calculator doesn't do arc secant or arc cosecant or arc cotangent, but the TI-85s, 86s, and 89s do, so if you had a fancier calculator, it could do this guy directly. Anyway, so now I want the arc cosine of minus 0 0.56715. Okay. Arc cosine minus 0.56715. And I get 124.55 degrees. Oh, gee, we'll round up that to 0.6. <clears throat> okay, now, the cosine is negative in the, I look at the cosine function, it does that. It's negative in the second quadrant, and it's negative in the third quadrant. So we're looking for a second quadrant answer, which we already have, and a third quadrant answer, 
that we want to get. Now, in order to get the third quadrant answer, we need the reference angle. Okay, so we say, all right, 1, 2, 4, 0. 0.6 uh, is equal to 180, 180 minus the reference angle. So the reference angle, uh, 180 minus 1, 2, 4, 0. 0.6. 180 minus 1, 2, 4, 4.6, boom, 55.5, 55.4. Right, so the reference angle is 55.4. So that means in the third quadrant, theta is going to be 180 plus the reference angle, 55.4, or um, 2, 3, 5.4 180 plus 55.4 oh, yes so my angle solution set uh, 1 2 4.6 and 2 3 5.4 okay we're going to take those one at a time and see if they're the guy up here well we won't have to do the 1 2 4 we'll just have to do the other guy and uh, cosine, cosine 235.4 uh, minus 0 0.5678. 5678, yeah, that's close enough because we round it off. Okay, good enough. But in that case, the reference angle wasn't one of our answers, our answer had to come from someplace else. That's it. Is there an arc? Cotangent problem? Yes, there is. Okay, so there, we'll do 38 and then we'll uh, take attendance. 38. Get back here and let the computer come up on the website. Uh -huh. The cotangent of theta minus 0 0.1365. Okay, well, um, that's 1 over the tangent of theta is cotangent of theta. So that means that tangent of theta 1 over minus 0 0.1365. Okay, 1 divided by 0.1365. Yes, we got minus 7.326. And now we're going to take the arc tangent of minus 7.326. Uh, arc tangent minus the answer. All right, so we get an answer of minus 82.2 degrees. All right, so that's a fourth quadrant answer. Okay, and we think about the tangent function again, and if we can draw it right this time, we have something that looks like that. And this is a fourth quadrant guy right there. And that's the first quadrant. We don't want him. And then the other guy is going to be a second quadrant guy. So we want two answers, one in the fourth quadrant, one in the second quadrant. All right, now, we don't want a minus angle, so we're going to say our first angle, which is our fourth quadrant answer, is going to be 360 minus 282.2. It's going to be 277.8. And then we need the reference angle, and the reference angle is going to be um, 82.2 degrees, right? Because in the frame angle, yeah, exactly. And then in the, we need a second, we need a third quadrant. What do we need? Um, we need a second quadrant answer for being negative. So we need a second quadrant answer. 
So the angle in the second quadrant is 180 minus the reference angle. So my second quadrant answer is going to be um, 97.8. And um, so theta can have two answers, uh, 82.2 or 97.8. Okay, well, um, tangent, 80, 82.2 is not right. 82.2 is a reference angle. We want that 300 guy. Uh, 277.8. Okay, so we want 277.8. Okay, so if I take the tangent of 277.8, I get minus 7.3. If I take the tangent of 97.8, I get the same answer. So these two guys are the same, and two of the significant digits we have are the same as that guy there, and everybody is happy with that, and it's time to call it a day. Okay, questions? I know how much you love problems that take multiple steps. How your mind likes to go through things systematically one step after another to find the answer. And any problem that requires more than two or three calculator strokes is a pain. I understand all that. But yeah, that's what we have to do. We have multiple steps to get there and there are no shortcuts. So if, we're, if, we're, if the purpose is to get the right answer, which is the purpose, right? then that's what we have to do. We have to figure out what quadrant we're in, what quadrant we have to be in, what the reference angle is. Yeah, all those things have to be done. Let's see. Um,